good morning today is a little bit of a different video for me I was asked by Graham Fulston from the Lakeside channel if I would do a how-to video now I wasn't going to do any how-to's because I don't think I'm um, experienced enough shall we say but he seems to think that it might be taken well so today we are going to take this which is one of my 3F Jinties it had a little bit of weathering done to it but I've cleaned it off this morning and give it a quick dust over with matte varnish just to remove any last traces and get it prepped so this is the basic model as it stands now so I have got a couple of things still to do to it um, before I get to weathering stage so as you can see I've got no cab numbers um, smoke box number is in I'm missing a hose and I'm missing a light um, but that's kind of about it so I'm going to finish my bits and pieces and then I'll come back to you and we'll make a start catch you in a bit there we are. right okay let's get on with this how to that Mr Folsom's convinced me that I should do so as you can see there's all the weathering powders that I've just showed you so basically I always start with a picture I have got one to the left of me but it's black and white it's very hard to find colour photographs of these towards the end of the life <coughs> please bear in mind that when I am weathering these mine is designed for end of life running so they're almost at the end of the days they're not going to be in good condition which is why mine come across as heavily weathered I want them to look like they're old and they're tired and they're almost pretty much ready for the scrapyard so let's get started um, now obviously one of the things that I do is I build things up in layers so we'll have a go and I have to start with the worst one to get out of the bottle which is this one for some reason all the other caps come out really really easily and for some reason this white one never does and it always chills me and it always gives me problems getting it out of the bloody jar but never mind we'll persevere or we'll tear it to bits getting it out one of the two just bear with me folks come on out you come nearly nearly come on there finally so I've got my white don't worry folks you're not going to have to watch that all over again rust iron oxide I'll leave that one for now that's oil stain wash that goes on after and then that one is this is my favourite one this one that one there dark earth I use that quite a lot as you can probably tell because the jars will be seen there but it's fairly empty uh, this is just black which I know sounds a little strange putting black on a black model but I don't know whether the camera will show it but you can see it on the model itself obviously sand because they've got sandboxes and at the end smoke which again is not very apparent on a black model um, but you can still see it so let's get started <coughs> pardon me right I'll start with my favourite which is the dark earth this is just to give it a bit of a rough overall dull it down um, make it look a little old mucky tired now, I know some of you out there are probably watching me throwing this on these wheels thinking whoa what's he doing well yes I know some people would do it their way would do it completely different to how I'm doing it but as I said this isn't a how you should do it this is a how I do it so I'm just going to flip this stuff around and then just start knocking it back off a little bit 
just where it is heavy um, as I said the idea is for me is to make this thing look like it's done some work now you can see that there's bits of collecting down here so sometimes I'll put them back up and just drop them back in and if you're looking at my numbers there that are a little somewhat skewed with believe it or not that was actually deliberate because in the real world things are never perfect and although sometimes I do want them dead straight there are times when I really don't want them straight I want them to look a little bit like somebody couldn't be bothered I was rushing to finish the job now obviously I'm going to miss some of these wheels where these Conrad's are running but I'll turn them at a later date and fit that in so already you can see there what I'm trying to do is to keep the thick end of this dark air along the bottom I know you guys with uh, air, air brushes and what have you will tend to look for sleeper grime I think that's the usual favourite colour and from these people real match um, that's not sleeper grime by the way it's just under frame brown um, so yeah I know that the, there's lots of different you know things out there that you can use I don't have a compressor um, and I'll be honest when I first start looking into you know how to do all of these sort of things I did look an awful lot Humbrol has their own YouTube page and I did look an awful lot on their stuff watch their tutorials um, and I thought yeah I think I can cope with managing on that basis so just putting a bit of powder on and to be honest with you for me I don't really think it's a skill as such it's more just about deciding what you want and where you know you've got to look at it and think well yeah no that looks right that looks too heavy and at the end of the day this stuff's not permanent um, you know until you actually physically sealed it in until you've sealed it in with a varnish it's not on forever so if you get it wrong and you don't like it then to be honest with you as I found with a mistake that I made once if you go really close with that stuff um, which is what I tend to what I'm using to seal it just a, a matte varnish but if you go really close to that and blow all over that it will just completely obliterate all your weathering um, as I say I found that out on one model um, got way too close and spent ages doing it was really pleased with the effect and then blew all the, all the weathering off so I was not a happy boy but never mind it was a lesson learned and I don't hopefully intend to make that mistake yet again so as I say we're just going to keep on dulling it down um, doing it that way because I want to get both sides of that seam and then just brush it up and um, pick up a little off the bottom just get in there it's important to get up the sides of them grab rails and along that side again just loads of brush up oh, I've lost my stick not to worry a uh, little bit up as, you say, as I said at the beginning you can see it's my favourite powder because it gives the initial change that I'm looking for a little heavy there never mind I'm sure you can hear me blowing at it just to take it off a little bit off knock the sandbox off never mind not an issue we can deal with it later so I don't want a great deal of brown over there yet because there's not I'm just gonna lightly dust it over you'll see why in a little bit so there there's your first effect we've now got something on around the sides and the bottoms uh, nothing on the top yet but I don't particularly go with the dark earth on the top I want that more across the bottom maybe I should just throw a little bit more on there sometimes I'll rub it in if you rub it like that it tends to 
coming a little thicker and then just blow it off. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's not really a skill in this. Well, I don't think there is, but that's probably because of the way that I just lash it on. Um, a little bit around here, and then blow it off. You'll notice there as well that when I before I start my weathering, obviously I'll detail them things like the handrails go on here, here, the lights, the vacuum pipes, the three link coupling, new buffers more often than not. Um, it's all painted up in matte black. Let it dry off. Then I put my transfers on. Then I spray it in matte varnish, and then I always put a little bit of brass on these where there would be brass. They're not going to stay as brass, but I'm not going to obliterate them or I'm not planning to obliterate them with powder so it's nice if you can see a little bit of the brass showing through afterwards so we'll, we'll go over that light just gingerly we don't want it to be I've lost one of my stickers there never mind I'm not worried I'll just make it look like it's come off a little bit so there's the first colours so I'm just gonna dab that a little bit on a wet wipe and I think we will now go for a little bit of have I got the right one smoke I have yes right cool this powder is a little bit finer um, than the dark earth and all I'm gonna do it's just, you can see I'm picking it up all the time, around the brass bits just a little bit, not a lot, and again over the roof, we're just going to try and knock back that brown that we've just put on, just a little bit, not a great deal, we don't want to go mad with it. Now they just uh, darken that coal up a little. It is real coal, by the way. It's not pretendy coal or imitation or anything else like that. It is the real deal. <coughs> so we'll just flatten this top down with a little bit of soot. Okay, right now then, this one is I've forgotten rust again sorry yeah and that's the one that is iron oxide I always get the two mixed up right this is the one where I'm now going to switch brushes because I don't want a big big lot of this on um, you can get too much of this and it can look a little a little wrong so this is me not working for me in particular I'm just looking for where I know things would be rusty and I know that around these boiler ends they did suffer a little bit I'm just going to pour a little bit up drop a little down there as I said a bit before getting near the end of its life and I know that this end of the boiler would particularly suffer with this general kind of effect. Again, just blowing it off as I'm going, just so that I don't go too heavy, but just generally, don't be scared, I suppose, there's any way to put it. It's just, you know, put the stuff on, and if there's too much, take it off. But it all depends on what you're looking for. I, as I say, I, I'm looking for a particular sort of era where these things would not be in the best of health, as I've said before. So because of that, I'm just randomly going to pour a little bit on here and there around the top because you've got to have a lot of water up here and a lot of steam. Um, so you, you you know at, at the age 
than it would be by now it would be suffering with the effects of so we're just gonna liberally see I'm changing it as I go here <laughs> I'm doing it on the, on the off the cuff on the hoof however you want to put it but I'm kind of just chucking it on now I know that's a little bit too red but I'm not particularly worried about that right now I'm going to go to the iron oxide again we'll stay with the little brush and all we want to do here is just add a little change of colour occasionally uh, not a lot just a little bit here and there I hope you can see just a little subtle differences in the corners there and that. again just dust it blow it out a little bit maybe a little bit dabbled around there yeah people might say oh god you're wasting it you're blowing it all away well it no, doesn't matter it's so expensive um, <coughs> just in the bottom half maybe a little bit up there it's kind of what you want really I mean you know if you if you want to do this but you sort of looking and thinking oh dare I well I suppose if you've got a 400 pound model you might not be so keen to just lash it on like I do and you're probably looking at something that cost me under a tenner so I'm not too worried but I've also learned that it's not a case of that's it, it's on and it's on forever. You can do something about it if you don't get it right. As I said. So yeah. Right, okay, so I've got that on. You notice sometimes I don't always clean my brush. I always only clean the brush when I've got the dark stuff on. When I'm wearing on the light stuff I'm not too worried about um, cleaning the brushes. It's just going from dark to light. So, a little bit of white, and we're just gonna gently just smudge that in with your finger. Just a little bit. I have another way of doing this as well. I have a uh, one of those white paint pen, which sometimes I'll, I'll dribble that on and use that, but it, it just depends how I feel, to be honest with you. Today, I'm going to stick with the powders. And just let it drop down. Tie up a little bit around there, lighten it up a little. And again, just use my finger, just blend it in just a little bit. Just a little bit there. Okay, right. <coughs> Change of brushes. I'm coming with a little bit of sand, which is ironic, considering I knocked one of the sand boxes off. Let's get some sand in there. Hope you can see in that. Oh. So I am literally just gonna. Took some sand around. I've looked at photos before on this, and sometimes it's surprising how much sand these things will, will actually will pick up. Um, I've seen one model that I looked at, and to be honest with you, the amount of sand on it was ridiculous. It looked like it'd been for a sand bath. Um, so again, this is personal choice. You decide how much you want on it. I just want I don't want a great deal. I just want to give the impression of but as you can see this stuff settling you can see it's very rusty looking. This one's been if you've seen the other jinty that I've done, this one is some looking somewhat more tired at the moment. Um but that was kind of where I wanted to be. I want one that's tired and I want one that's really looking rough. Um, as I said to you before, I know I'm going to have lines behind these. I ain't worried, I'll deal with that later when I come to clean the wheels up. 
Um, yes, I do get the wheels in the state, I know that, but to be honest with you, I think part of that is because I was a beginner with all this, and the model you're looking at here, and some of the others I've done, were already painted up, and I've learned now that really it saved myself a bit of grief and time. Next time I should take the wheels and the and chassis out and just work on the top half. But I've already done it and I've already made the mistake with this one, so I'm not bothered. I'll clean them up later. It's not a, not an issue. Um, but yeah, as you can see, all of this is just constantly, you know, mess about with this. I'm coming with a little bit of black. I just want to dull things down a little bit. Don't go too deep with it, though. You still want to get the impression that the that the wear and the tear and the old age is still sitting underneath that. And of course, by doing it like this, um, it gives you the ability to build up a layer. So you know, as you can see around, hopefully you can see around there. Never done this before with the camera off my shoulder. But if you can see that, you've got that sort of red, orangey, browny colours going on underneath it, and then the black, which is kind of depicting a little bit of soot and what have you. So it does help to sort of give some definition by doing it like that. Um, it just gives that feeling of it's not just a colour thrown on although it is because that's how I do it but yeah so we're just gonna dampen it down a little take off some of that it's a little bit heavy for me now now I'm looking at it I've got a chance to step back a little bit so we're just gonna use some of this black take it down a little bit just to something I'm a little bit more happier with Hopefully you're seeing that. You can see now that's that's more where I want to be at. I've still got the colour variations in there that I was wanting, but I've toned it down. If you look at that side, and you look at that side, so it's all a little bit trial and error with me. Um, sometimes I like I say, sometimes I will work from a photograph. Sometimes I won't. The Jinties, as I say, difficult to find good colour photographs. Well, that's not technically true. You can find loads of colour photographs of Jinties. The trouble is, they're all restored. So when they're all restored, they're all looking pristine and, you know, they're all nice shiny black paint. And, well, yeah, that's how it came when it was supplied by Hornby or Tryon. I think it's a Tryon one, if I remember rightly. Um, so that doesn't help me. I need something that's genuine. And unfortunately, all the Jinty photographs that I've got in my folder on the computer, um, I'm afraid, are um, black and white when they are old, or <coughs> colour photographs of the new stuff that's been restored, which isn't quite what I'm looking for. So there you go, I'm okay with that. Right, the next little part is to do this little front end. Now, I noticed that I've missed the back pipe, which I've, uh, which I've just fitted this morning, because that went on this morning, so did the light, and then I knocked the light off a minute before I started doing this part, so it's low, which is probably when I tore that, that flash there, but hey ho, never mind. So, a bit of black, and a bit of white, just work it together on the desk just to get that ash look and then just drop it in there like that maybe a little tad more black as I said it's not a science it's what you're looking for and I'm just going to drop some white 
on the top <sighs> just like that you can see that so that gives you the impression of I've been clearing it out at the front end. Just wipe that up a bit and a little bit on there. So I think the wheels may be a little bit yellow. Yeah. So I think we're gonna dull them off a little. I think I've got too much over here. So this is going back to what I already said to you at the end of the day, if you wait happy to knock it back I won't leave the front because there would be a, a sand pot over there and again, it's mostly the middle wheel I want to knock out I'm not convinced that that middle wheel looks right for me I mean, yeah, as I said, you can get some of these <coughs> old steam engines when you look at them and they are absolutely riddled with sand um, but I'm going to knock it back just a little shade so yeah I'm kind of getting somewhere near I want to be again as I said I'm just I add things in as I look at them so I'll, I'll keep peeling it back and I'll keep looking and thinking I need something there I need something here all I'm trying to do here is to get these lines and around that roof blow it off a little bit going for a little of the iron oxide just for the slightly lighter shade back to the black is it the black or is it the smoke? I think it's smoke isn't it? no it's black it's smoke I want up here so we're just going to knock it back now a little bit of black in there push it in to the powders you've already got and as you can see there it's given that effect that it's a little bit it's not flat black like it used to be when it came out of the shops you know it was when it came out of its last repaint it would be all black and it would be shiny and looking lovely well it's not like that no more now and then we just need to address this chimney again just gonna shouldn't have done that that was all I wanted see as I say it's just a lot of this is just what do you think I mean you've seen me black knock that back and I've looked at it and thought no I need to bring it up a little bit more again in with the black just want to knock it down a little and those brass things I want to put plenty on them now just see the bits of shine I hope on the camera which is what I was looking for I don't want them being completely brass because they wouldn't have been they wouldn't be clean and there you are so I think for the minute that's going to do me so on to my next little product which is my favourite this hope you can see this Citadel Typhus Corrosion I've mentioned it before I saw it on a YouTube ad, uh, video I'm really sorry I can't remember the guy's name <coughs> uh, I know Laurie at um, oh, on Calvert Films or uh, I can't remember what your, film, your channel's called Laurie but anyway I know he uses this he, he mentioned in a comment on one of mine about this he uses this as well brilliant product not a lot in the bottle but absolutely brilliant it's this simple give it a really good shake because it's almost as like, like a texture paint be careful when you open it and you don't peel back because that little spout there tends to drip for a while so I'm going to go to a smaller brush 
and just let me rummage around a little bit for what I want. Now this stuff is brilliant at what it does, it goes on, it looks like brown paint and then somehow, do not ask me how because I'm not technically minded, but somehow after a little while of being on it starts settling looking like rust and all I'm going to do is put it on, but I'm going to put it on quite liberally anywhere where I know that rust would be setting in basically. So all your seam lines on the backs of these cabs you would get a build up as well. Yes, I know I've just gone over that number, that was deliberate. And that number again deliberate. These things are all the tired, they are not going to look perfect. They are gonna look a little bit battered. Things will not be in a hundred percent condition. As you can see, loading the brush up again, and I'm just literally running along that seam. That would be a good point for collecting water and would rust something terrible over the time. So you can literally flood it with this stuff. Just the occasional little flick up, just now and again, random, you can do a little bit down and I know that's going over the white paint that I put on the white powders but don't worry about that not important right now we're just gonna keep on dropping the bits of this in wherever I think personally obviously I think so in here yes rust we've got the powders in there so we want this in there and you might be looking and think to yourself why on earth did he put all them weathering powders in there and then whack this stuff all over the top well it's <laughs> a good question but I don't want to cover all of the weathering powders I just want to cover some of it so I'm not intending to cover all of it hence why there's bits that will be left and bits that won't be left it's very random it's what I make of it I say the only thing you have to remember with this is keep it fairly thick and fairly heavily when you do just so that you get the effect it, so that it builds up nicely Now I know at the moment it probably doesn't look so hot but trust me once this stuff dries in it starts to look a whole lot different. I'm just going to a little bit along the tops here, not a great deal and when it's dried on again I'll come back at it with the weathering powders and I'll knock it back if it's a little bit too much once it's dried on. But I like to see where it's at first. Um, obviously, little bits on the chimneys. Here's a little bit on there. And then that rust around here. So it's just random on the top because it's kind of what it would be. Again, load the brush up, get it on, load them up again. I want it looking tired, very tired. So I know I've totally obliterated that but I'm not bothered I don't care I keep saying that don't I but I don't um, I kind of I'm not fussed about going over 
I know what it looked like. Um, and I know how I wanted the the weather and scheme to appear. So I'm not too worried about knocking it or knocking it back with this stuff. There. So very random. Pretty much just chucked on. But that's our ball. So I'm gonna go and have a cup of coffee and I'm hoping you can see that. And I'm gonna let that dry off a little, close that down and brush that brush out. So yeah, that's that. I'll now let that dry off a little bit. Um, go and have a nice cup of coffee and I want to come back and we'll hit it with the powders again but the whole point is get your powders on don't be scared put them on put them on mess about with them if you don't like it throw this at it really close it'll just blow them all off and it'll give you a matte black finish again but get your powders on then if you want to use this stuff I mean I ain't going to use that on every one of the models I have because a lot of the diesel stuff I have is going to be pretty much pristine apart from the chassis which are going to carry that sort of stuff, the under frame brown. Um, they're probably not going to see a great deal of the powders because you know my diesels will be fairly new. They were, the idea is that it's in the area where they're taking over from these. So throw your powders on get that out if you're going to use it very liberally on your brush and I don't know if the camera's picking up but I'll give you a close up after to dry it on you can already see the texture starting to appear now which helps it look like rust um, and for all that I've thrown this over a lot of what I put on what you have to be conscious of is that when I put those powders on although I've covered them in places you will see that all of this work that I've done was worthwhile because I can see black and I can see brown and I can see the rust and the oxide and then I can see my new stuff that I've just shot on my typhus corrosion so what I'm getting there is a build up of layers of different colours and different effects and different textures and if I've gone too far with the typhus I just come back with the wedding powders and just go on like here that will get white over it again but the reason I put the typhus on is because I want the white to sit over bubbling rust as it would in the real world it would rust and it would get white but you'd be able to tell the white was sitting on top of rust so anyway enough of me prattling on I'll go and have my coffee and I'll come back see you in a bit